In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to perform a quick exploratory data analysis using the SuiteVis library in Python. And so without further ado, we're starting right now. So fire up the notebook that I'm providing in the description of this video. And so let's first start by installing the SuiteVis library. So this is a simple pip install. All right, and so it's now successfully installed. And now we're going to be reading in the Penguin's data set. So import pandas as PD, and we're going to be using the read CSV function. And as import argument, it's going to be the URL from the data professor GitHub of the cleaned version of the Penguin's data set. And then we're going to be assigning it to the Penguin's variable. And now we're going to be splitting the penguins data set into the X and the Y variables. So we're going to split Y to the species column and X will be everything else. And that's why we're going to drop the species. So let's have a look at the X variable. And so you're going to see the following columns here. And so you're going to see here that it comprises of both qualitative and quantitative data types. And there are a total of six columns and 333 rows. And now we're going to be analyzing the Penguin's data set using the SwiftViz library. So let's take a look at the Penguin's data set. So for this one, we're going to take a look at the entire data set. This is before splitting it into X and Y. And that's why we're going to have the column called species here which will be Y in the subsequent analysis, which I will be showing you in just a moment. So here we're going to be using the entire data set of the penguins. So there will be a total of seven columns, 333 rows. All right, now comes the fun part. So we're going to create a variable called analyze report. And so we're gonna use the analyze function from the SwiftViz library. And as input argument, it's going to be the penguins data set. And then we're going to be using the show HTML function and then creating a HTML file called analyze.html. Oh, okay, so we haven't yet run. Okay, so we have to first import SwiftViz as SV. All right. All right, so now the analyze.html file was generated. And to the left here in the Google Colab, you could have a look at the files in the working directory. So you wanna click on the files icon here. And then here, you're gonna see the analyze.html. So you could either download this into your computer or you could also display it here. So why don't I start by displaying it right inside the Google Colab. So we're gonna run this cell. All right, so this is the quick exploratory data analysis. So as you can see here, you could quickly see the general distribution of the entire data set here. So for the species data, let me collapse this for a moment. So for the species variable, we're gonna be seeing that there are three distinct types. Adeli, Gen2, and Chinstrap. And we're gonna be seeing that Adeli accounted for more than 40% of the entire data set. And coming in at number two is Gen2, followed by Chinstrap. And for the island column, we're gonna be seeing that there are three distinct types, Bisco, Dream, and Torgerson. And the most prevalent data is the Bisco, followed by Dream, followed by Torgerson. So you're gonna see the relative percentage for which each of these are accounting for. And these will be the histogram because they are quantitative. As for the prior two, they are qualitative variable. And same thing for build dap. So we're gonna see the histogram distribution. So each bar will represent a range, like somewhere between 32 to 35, 35 to 37, etc. And so we're gonna be seeing that there are 163 distinct data values because they are quantitative versus three for the qualitative data types. 
And so same for build length, build depth, flipper length, and body mass. So there will be the histogram distribution. And for each of them, you will be seeing the maximum, the minimum value, and then the median, the average, and also the Q3, Q1, and also the 95% and 5%, the values of each of the parameters here. Okay, and also other statistical parameters as well. And then the seventh column here, sex, two distinct, male, female, and they're roughly similar, accounting at roughly half of the data set. And here to the right, if you hover your mouse, you will be seeing more details. Like if I hover on species, I'm going to be seeing the same thing, but then it's going to be slightly bigger. And we're going to be seeing the specific number. Like for example, the Adeli accounted for 44%. And so they have 146. So N is equal to 146. And 119 is accounting for 36%. And 68 for chin strap. So out of 333, we're going to be seeing what is the N size for each of the Adeli, Gen 2, and chin strap. Okay, so this is a quick exploratory data analysis. And you can see that the entire visualization that you're seeing here will require you to use only a single line of code, which is essentially sv.analyze. Okay, so this is the only one-liner from the SwiftViz library that will generate the analysis. And the others are just visualizing the HTML file using the show HTML function. All right, let's proceed further. So recall a moment ago, I split the data into X and Y. So normally when we create a data set for performing model building using the scikit-learn package, we're going to be splitting the data into X and Y. And then X will be used to train the model and Y as well. But then the Y will be the class label. And so the model building process will require that we split the data set into X and Y. And then we're going to be splitting X and Y further into training set and testing set. And so here we're going to be using the 80-20 split ratio. And so we're going to use the function train test split from the scikit-learn package. Let's go ahead and run that. All right, and so let's have a look at the X train. So we're going to see here that there are 266 rows, six column, and X test. All right, and so it's accounting for 67 rows and also six column. So we're seeing the 80% split here at the X train and the X test will be the 20% subset. So here we're going to use the SwiftViz library to compare between the training set and the test set. So let's have a look here. So as always, it's going to be a one liner code. So sv.compare, and then as input argument, we're going to use the x train, comma, the x test. Okay, and then we're going to be labeling it train and test. And then finally, we're going to be using the show HTML function to display the generated compare.html file. And so we're not going to let the Google Colab open the generated HTML, so we're going to use equals to false here. Let's run it. And in just a moment, you're beginning the HTML file. All right, now we have generated the file. Let's take a look. Okay, and so you're gonna see two colors, the blue color and the orange color, which will represent the train set and the testing set. So this part will allow you to see the quick breakdown comparing the train and the test set. So they comprise of 266 rows and 67 rows for the test. And we're going to see the breakdown for each of the values here. Bisco, we're going to see that for all of them, Bisco, Dream, or Torgerson, they're going to have roughly similar frequency here for the train and test because they are randomly split between the train set and the test set. So if we randomize the splitting, we're anticipating that the histogram that we're going to see here might be different. So what you're seeing and what I'm seeing might be different because if we're not setting the seat number, then the randomization effect will allow the seat number to vary at each run. And so we're not going to get the same data splits. And so you might be seeing some variation between what you're doing and what I'm showing here. But the way to solve that is to set the seed number. So let's have that as your homework. Try setting the seed number and you're going to be seeing that the distribution from the data splitting will be the same every time that you perform the analysis here. Okay, and so in a nutshell, you're going to be seeing the comparison between the training set and the test set for each of the columns 
or each of the variables, okay? So let me show you here. You could also download the analyze and the compare.html file into your own computer. And then let's open it up in our computer. Analyze. So this is the HTML file. So you can even email this to your colleague. Oh, it's blocking. So by default, the pop-up was blocked. Let me try again. All right, now it works. Here you go. So the comparison between the training set and the test set. Okay, so feel free to share this with your colleague. And as you can see here, each of these analysis will take you only a couple of seconds because it requires just a one-liner and another one-liner to display the HTML right inside the Jupyter Notebook. And as you can see here, we can also export it out, save it, and then email it to your own colleague. And so if you're finding value in this video, please give it a like, subscribe if you haven't yet done so, hit on the notification bell in order to be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.